Testing. Hey, can you hear me okay? How's my sound sound? Today I'm thinking about talking about different types of slicers and uh, ways to print. Unless you have uh, other questions you want to ask. Hey, Hobby Rob, long time no see. I'm trying to remember if it's Holland or someplace in uh, Western Europe that you're from. See if we have enough for a quorum in the uh, chat room. It looks like two people today. Sometimes it gets up to uh, 12, 24, so. How's your uh, printer working, Rob? Now, is it Guten Tag or, uh, or is it Aben in Dutch? I'm saying it in German, I think. Let's see. So far, only two people. Must be a slow day. Do uh, anybody have any questions on stuff that uh, I haven't really covered close enough? Because if not a lot of people are showing up, I can talk about something else. Guten Avadon? Is that like morning? Or is that late afternoon? Oh, guten Abend. I'm probably mangling it a little. Uh, in this tutorial, uh, Bob, I'm probably going to work with the NEMA 20, or um, excuse me, the NEMA 17 today. I'm just going to show functionality and how to work with uh, different types of slicers and ways to communicate with uh, the actual printer. I got a couple questions uh, in the morning about it, so I thought I'd talk about it. It might seem kind of like a uh, dry subject, but it's kind of important. So I'm going to start off by talking about first uh, Pronerface. Pronerface is uh, a combination of a serial connection to the printer. As you can see right here. Let me see if I'm plugged into it. There we go. So I'm going to connect to the actual board that you see below. And the first thing that I want to do is uh, 
show you the end stops. As you can see, there's only one connected, but two say open. There might be something modified on the board that's causing that to occur. But I'm going to plug this in for a second. Hopefully we won't see any sparks. And uh, I'm going to move the x-axis. So you can see it moving there. Some of the things that are important about this is if you run into a problem with your printer, there's several places you can look in Pronterface. In Pronterface, you have uh, debug communications. So you can click here, and if you send a command, you might see more about it. Then if you move the actual stepper, you might see what the actual uh, commands are for that. Like right here, G, 0, X10, and then F3000. That's talking about the actual movement for G0, being the G code. That's kind of important if you're trying to figure out what's going on. But also the debug will tell you what temperature you're functioning at right now. Obviously the temperature doesn't look right for what I'm doing because I don't have an actual thermistor connected so it's bare wires over here or non-connected thermistors so I'm going to turn off this for a second the other thing that's in slicer or excuse me the other thing in Pronterface is slicer so you can actually have different modes to slice in this is just like Cura so I'm going to see if I can open up the slicer from here so slicing settings That's okay, my, uh, pardon me, uh, my uh, Dutch is obviously horrible. It sounds more like German. But uh, as soon as this opens up, hopefully we'll be able to see it. If you can't see it, let me know in a second. I'm just waiting for it to open. So can you see that I'm in Slicer? If not, I'll make it so it's visible. I actually have to check in the chat to see if you can see Slicer. Yeah, I was able to install Marlin, but I don't know which Marlin you're talking about because I had a problem with, uh, with my Python setup last night that I fixed on the fly. Okay, so hang on a second. Let me get Slicer so you can see it. So here's Slicer. Basically what this is, is a way to specify all the settings for your print. It's a very simplified version, but has complexity to it. So if you actually click on File, and then uh, I'm trying to figure out where Advanced Settings is. It's been a while since I've done this. Let's see, check for updates. Preferences, Expert, okay. So there's a simplified version and there's an Expert version. So I'm gonna actually leave it on Expert, hopefully. I didn't just change it by accident. No, it's fine. So inside here, we have Layers and Perimeter. So as you can see, it says what the step layers are. This is very big step. It's meant for a, a hot end that has a hole in it of 0.4 millimeters, I believe. But we can check that actually in Slicer. So I think it might be under filament settings. Here we go. And it shows a tool tip. In this case, it's three millimeters, but normally it would be 1.75. That gives you an idea of where you're setting things and then you can set your extruder temperature to begin with and you can also set your bed temperature if you so choose. 
and it says basically what you want to set it to. You can even set the color, but that's not really setting a color. Then there's cooling. It talks about fans. There's an always on fan. So this gives you greater control when you export to a G code, being a file. And then there's other settings for actually fill. So most fills are going to be 20% by default, and then there's different patterns. I used to love the honeycomb pattern, but uh, it doesn't really matter to me anymore. And then there's uh, top fill and bottom fill, and you can have a lot of fun with that too. Um, I know this seems kind of dry, but I'll show you how it relates in a second. So let me see if I can find the actual... Uh, there's a main menu for here. It might need a configuration wizard, so let me click on this real quick. I'm going to set it up for Marlin, Sprinter, or Repeteer. I'm going to say it's 20 by 20, or excuse me, 20 centimeters by 20 centimeters, which is 200 millimeters, obviously. And the print head I'm going to say is 0.4 millimeters. And then I'm going to set the diameter to 1.75. I'm hoping you can see this pop-up window. I'm pretty sure you can. Then bed temperature I'm going to set to 30, or excuse me, 60. This is all in Celsius, of course. And that should set our settings. So I'm going to save those. Then I'm going to look around, see what the settings are. Um, these, you can vary. You actually have greater control than something like Cura. So all these settings are here. Now the one thing that I'm looking for is my bed window, which is not appearing. So what I'm going to do is actually open it a different way. So I have to go over to my uh, desktop here to pull it up. So in desktop, I'm going to close this down for a second and see if I can actually open it. It's in my print run directory under slicer and I'm going to open the executable and hopefully that'll open someday. Looks like it's already open, but here's the actual platter for your printer. So what we're going to do is actually add something to it. I just got to find something. So I'm actually going to go over to Thingiverse for a second and see if I can pull something down. So on Thingiverse, there's lots of different models. So I'm going to look for a cube for calibration. And hopefully it'll allow me to download without having to log in. So it's going to take a second. Don't forget to tip your dev the uh, designers because uh, some of them make their living off it. So once that's downloaded, you're going to go over to your downloads folder. You're going to right click on it. You're going to extract all. Not zip it. And this will pull down the information on your board, or excuse me, on your model that you pulled down. They have images over here so you can see what it looks like. And then they have the actual model right here. So I'm going to go back to Slicer and show you what occurs. So I'm going to add it in Slicer. I'm going to go to my downloads folder. I'm going to open it up, go to the file, and click on it. Notice how it's STL, that's stereolithography. I'm going to open it up, and it's going to show me size to the platter, what it looks like, and what the dimensions are and where they are. So X is going to be your front, and then left side, or excuse me, right side is going to be your Y, and top is Z. So it gives you a bunch of different options. You can resize this in Slicer. So if you want to set a different size, you can scale it. You can scale it in one dimension uniformly, all that stuff. 
But the other thing that you can do is you actually can do your G codes. So you can export them for a print. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to look at the settings and see if I can set something obvious. So there's usually an ending code that you can put in here. So I'm just going to do another G code that makes absolutely no sense. So I'm going to do M105, which is what temperature is it, I believe. And I'm going to save that. And the reason I'm doing this is just so you can see the ending of the script, what's going to occur. And it's something obvious. So I'm going to slice it. And what this does is it's going to create a file name for this. Of course, my computer's running slow because I've got the stream going and the computer. So I guess I'm going to watch paint dry while the computer catches up. Well, that's working real well. So I'm going to skip over and uh, open up Cura then so you can look at that because this isn't responding. It might have to do with what I'm working with. I'm going to open up Cura. Cura is the same concept. It's all integrated into one package. A little bit easier for people that just started using it. But while this is loading, I'm going to go over and check on the chat. So, Bob, what are you asking about Slicer? It's no Slicer? Or that's not the Slicer you use? So, let me check to see if it's come up. It looks like it is going to come up someday. Wow. Apparently, Kura has taken a while to load as well. It might have to do with my Firefox eating up all my memory here. Okay, let me set it up so you can see it. So, Kura is the exact same thing. You can open up an actual folder someday. Hang on, I gotta close my Firefox. This is probably what's causing my computer all this fun. There's a bug in Firefox that apparently is uh, eating up hard drive space or paging space. Ah, oh. okay. Thanks, Bob. Apparently my computer's a little bit hung, so maybe we should talk about something else while uh, I figure out what's going on with my computer. I have a funny feeling that uh, Firefox uh, might be a bad choice for browsers right now. Okay, well, I guess we'll take Q&A for now, because uh, my plan to work on Slicer or on Cura is not working out very well. So maybe we'll keep it to the realm of uh, how to configure stuff in uh, VS Code or how to set something up on the uh, actual board. So which boards do you have that uh, you want to set something up on? Apparently, my computer is completely hung.
Well, anybody got any questions today, or uh, we're just gonna hang out and chat? Uh, looks like I'm completely frozen for Fura. Let's see if I can find out what's going on. Actually looking at the task manager right now to see what's uh, possibly causing an issue. But the task manager is completely hung too. Okay, well... I guess we're going to cut it short today if uh, everything's hung on me. Or you can give me 10 minutes to come back online. Okay, well, I guess I'm going to have to end it because uh, my computer is not cooperating. So, take care of each other and... Uh, I'll see you tomorrow. I might do a bigger tutorial where you can actually see me configure a full printer. So we'll probably do one of the uh, MKS boards and hopefully I'll be able to configure everything on the printer minus, you know, the Z access or like the BL Touch or 3D Touch. So have a nice day. Sorry about this.